Hi guys, welcome back to Adventurous Ukuleles. My name is Tim. Today we're going to be looking at how to add sparkle to your basic chords. The first chord everyone learns on the ukulele is a C major chord. One finger, four strings, dead easy. But what is a C major chord? It is a basic triad. It's got three different notes in. It's got the first, the third, and the fifth of the C major scale. In this case, it's a C, an E, and a G. They move up in thirds. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm skipping out uh, note number two, and then coming in again with note number three of the scale. So we call that interval a third. There are three notes of the scale. The next are one after three. Three, four, five. Again, there's another third of the scale above it as well. So stacking up thirds like this first, third and a fifth gives us our C major triad. But then we've got a fourth string and we normally play that here. What note is that? Well, let's work it out. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's a C again. We, there are only seven different letter names in the musical alphabet. So when we get to note number eight, we repeat the note we started from. This is an octave and it's the same note as we started from, a C. So we've actually doubled up the C. We've got a C, an E, a G, and another C. That is our basic chord, and we've doubled up one of the notes. This is the same with any other basic chord on the ukulele, with an F chord. We've got an F, an A, a C, although that's been dropped an octave now to fit on the ukulele, and then we've got this note. Oh, it's the same as our A. Doubled up. Let's have a look at a G chord. We've got a G, a B, and a D. Again, that's been dropped an octave. And then we've got this note. Oh, same as our first note. So we've doubled the root note, the first. Let's look at a D major chord. This one's in a nice uh, predictable one. We've got our first, third, and fifth. In this case, a D, F sharp, and an A. And then this note. Ah doubled our A again. So all of our basic major triads on the ukulele have to double one of the notes because there are only three different notes in a major chord. It's the same for the minor chords. A minor has an A, a C, and an E. In this case, both of those have been dropped an octave below the root note. It doesn't matter about the order, the notes are that of an A minor chord. And then this note, same as the first one, we've doubled up the A in this case. So that is a basic triad, it's called a triad because it's got three notes in. But uh, how do we make that more interesting? Our basic triad has three notes, first, third, and fifth. That top note we're playing there is technically note number eight, same as note number one again. But if we change note number eight, uh, let's take it down to note number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven got four different notes. The interval of that note above the first note, the root note, uh, is actually a major seventh. All of the notes have intervals, uh, have names. We've got unison, the root note, and we've got a major second, a major third, a perfect fourth, a perfect fifth, a sixth, uh, well, let's call that a major sixth, uh, and then a major seventh, and then a octave. So this interval there is a major seventh, so we could call this a C major chord with a major seventh. Ooh. And for sure we call it C major seven. There are loads of other extensions we can do. We can use a dominant seventh. That note there is a B flat. It's not in our C major scale. So technically that is not a major seventh, that is a minor seventh above the root note. Um, but it's also known as a dominant seventh because that interval comes in when you use the dominant chord, the fifth chord of a scale. Again, topic for another video. But that is what we normally call a C7 or a C dominant seventh, most commonly written just as C7. Notice there's an important difference between a C major seven and a C7. They're both C major chords, but with a different flavor of seventh on top. C major seven is a C major chord with a major seventh, 
C7 is a C major chord with a minor 7th on top, uh, often called the dominant 7th. That's adding another third to the original stack. First, third, fifth, seventh. We could add another note to that, the ninth. This would be a C9 if we add the seventh as well. First, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth. We've got a C9 chord. That would sound like this. Notice though I've got five notes. One, three, five, seven, nine. And only four strings. I have to miss one of them out. The fifth is doing the least musically there. The, the root note is telling us what chord it is. The third is telling us whether it's major or minor. The fifth isn't doing very much. It's doing something, but not very much. The seventh is making it sound really seventh-y, and the ninth is the cool extra note we want to add. So let's just skip out the fifth. That would be a C9. We can do other extensions as well. We could take the third, raise it to a fourth, replace the third, suspend the third temporarily into a fourth, and we've got a C suspended fourth, oh, which then resolves back to our normal C. So a C sus four. You might have seen that written as. We can do the same with the second. We could take the third and move it down to a second, a C sus two. The ones I want to talk about today are none of these, although they're based on it. A C9 implies a seventh as well. It's a very nice jazz chord. You can see it sounds like a C7, it does the same role musically. But if we leave the seventh out and just add the ninth, we only get four notes, which suits the ukulele better, and it sounds much less seventhy uh, and just a bit more interesting. So let's leave the seventh out. There's our C add nine. C with an added ninth. Now the ninth note is the same as the second note. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Oh, D, we already said D, D was number two as well. So nine is the same as two. So it's just like adding a second, but keeping the third in there. So it's not a C sus two, um, because the third is still there. Keeping the E, adding a D as well, and keeping the C and the G. We could actually use the D down here. So it's technically a C add two. But C add nine is normally how we write it because the ninth is the kind of defining interval. Of it. We save the two chords for a C sus two. Just one of the quirks of music naming. But this now is a C add nine. And it sounds like a C, but sparklier, I think. Richer, there's more going on. There's four different notes rather than just three. Let's try it with a new chord. Let's take an F. So we're gonna add the F, there's the A, there's the C, and we need to have a G in there because it's the ninth note or the same as the second note. One note above an F is a G. Oh, there's a G string here. Just take that finger away. That note is the one we're doubling up anyway, so we're not losing anything. There's a G added. Oh, an F at nine. Easier to play and more sparklier. Is that a word? Who knows? Let's try it with a G. G. Can we take that G and raise it up to a ninth? Yes, we can. I'm using my thumb for this one. Could equally well use a bar or four fingers. I use my thumb. A G add nine. Like a G, but sparklier. Let's compare using basic chords and added ninth chords for a song that's really simple. Say the Grand Old Duke of York. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had to C add nine, and when they were up, they were up. G add nine, and when they were down, they were down. And then C add nine and F add nine, and when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor It's a subtle effect, but the chords then, when I add the ninth in there, it just sound richer, denser, more interesting. They've got a bit of dissonance. Those two notes together in the C add nine don't sound that good on their own, but with the context of the chord, they had a little bit of tension, a little bit of frisson to the chord, or sparkle, if you want an awful pun on my surname. So, these are the chords that I used to play the intro, uh, and let's have a look now at how to play them. We've only looked at adding ninths to major chords so far, but we can do the same to minor chords. Here's an E minor chord, E, G, B, and then this 
one is the G, so that's the third of our chord. Um, we've got a third there, so we need to swap one of those. Let's drop that one by semitone. That makes it into a ninth or a second. Ooh, there is our E minor add ninth. This is one of my favorite add ninths. You can see those notes are very close together. Got that nice dissonance going on. Often used in uh, pop songs, for instance, every breath you take. There's a G add nine. Every move you make. An E minor add nine. Every step you take. C add nine. Every bond you break. Ooh, a G, a, a D there. We'll talk about that in a minute. I'll be watching you. There's our E minor add nine. So I'm going to use that one to start us off. Then we're going to go to a C with an added ninth. Then we're going to go to a G with an added ninth. Then we're going to go to a D. We could add a ninth here. Uh, added ninth there. I can't very easily though. The note that's doubled in this case is the fifth. So it's not very easy for me to take one of those and make it into a ninth. I could five, six, seven, Could add a nine like this. Get the right note in. Bit, a bit of an effort. What else could we add to the chord? Let's try adding a fourth. Normally, when we play a D add a D sus four, we take the third, replace it with a fourth. But let's try keeping the third in there. The fourth is a G. We've got a G here. Let's try this. Again, a four-note chord with a bit of dissonance. Doesn't change the nature of the chord, but it still sounds a bit cooler, a bit more sparkly. So I'm going to use that D. The added bonus is it's a little bit easier to play than normal D as well. Works very nicely in the key of G because nowhere adding is a G. You can often add any note of the, the key that you're in, any, the scale from the key you're in, to a chord and it'll sound okay. It'll add a new flavour to the chord. Try it out. Subject for another video maybe. I'm going to use a D add 4 at the end. So our chords are E minor add 9, C add 9, G add 9, D add 4. And I'm going to use a finger picking pattern. Thumb and first finger is all we need. Use your other fingers on the body of the ukulele to support it. We'll do another video on finger picking another time. But the pattern I'm going to use is my thumb on the G string nearest my head. My first finger on the E string, second from the floor. Then my thumb on the C string, second from my head. And then my first finger on the A string, nearest the floor. So G string, E string, C string, A string, alternating between thumb and first finger. This finger picking pattern can get really fast. You're only using a thumb and first finger. They're both pretty strong fingers. They can repeat the same thing. All they're doing is moving over by one string each time. You can really pick up the pace on this. Try and keep your thumb straight-ish. You can have it as straight as you can if you want, but it tends to slow it down slightly. Um, so a little bit of a curve is okay, but finger definitely needs to be curved. Your thumb is picking down towards the floor and your finger is plucking up towards your head. Move your hand as little as possible, just move your fingers. Keep that picking pattern going, move to the C add nine. Same for the G add nine the richness of those four note chords there's so much more going on than just the three ones and then the D add four almost like bells and they blend together that dissonance kind of hangs in the air if you compare it to just playing the same pattern with the normal chords you can hear we're getting repeated notes it doesn't sound as nice the C C sounds alright because we've we haven't actually doubled, we've moved the, the doubled note is up an octave, but then the G, first two notes are the same, it's boring. Same for the D. First two notes are the same. Adding these four note chords in, the add nines or add fours, really gets a bit of movement going on in the chord, particularly when you're doing finger picking. 
So here's that sequence, three and four and. Moving to a C add nine. G add nine. D add four. And then I did some strumming based on these chords, which really, again, brings out the dissonance in them. You can hear those notes absolutely arriving together and being quite tense. And I'm alternating between the add ninth and the normal chord. Normal E minor, E minor add nine. So I'm doing, and then back to the E minor. E minor add nine, E minor. Let's do a C add nine. Normal C. C add nine. Then let's go to a G. G add nine. Take the add nine away. Add it back in. And then a D add four. Normal D. I'm using my thumb for that one. You could also add in other variations of the chord. We talked about sus fours. I quite like doing a sus four on the G. Dropping my little finger in there, taking the third, raising it to a fourth. Or you could drop it down to a second, a, D, a G sus two. Uh, same for the D, we could add in the fourth there, make it into a D sus four. So that strumming pattern all together sounds like this. One and two and three and four and... C. Try hammering on to those new notes. G add nine, sus four maybe. D add four, turn into a sus four. E minor add nine, back to normal E minor. C, hammer on to an add nine, normal C. G major, add nine. D add four. Finish on an E minor add nine and milk it. Now the ukulele is missing a few strings to do really big chord extensions, which is why I think the four note add nine and add four chords really work well on the ukulele. So try dropping some of these into your playing. When you're playing normal triads, normal major and minor chords, try adding in some add nine chords and make it a bit more sparkly. That was the way to make your chords a bit more sparklier. I hope you can bring some more interest and richness to your playing. And if you do like these videos, then click the like button. Uh, and if you would like to see more of them, and uh, have them arrive when you arrive on YouTube and they'll be displayed in your feed, then click the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, it just means you get to see when I do the next one. Uh, and if you really want these videos to carry on, then do check out the links in the description where there are ways you can support me to make them. There's a Patreon link and there's a PayPal link no one is paying me to do these videos except you guys. It's lockdown. It's 2021. We're still in lockdown, hopefully on the way out. But if you want to support musicians uh, doing free educational resources like this, then do consider supporting me. Guys, thank you so much. See you again next time.